now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a listing. Remember that a listing will need to be created when you are representing the seller. To go ahead and create a listing, the first thing you would do is click on Create Listing. It's going to ask you to input the address. And when you do this, a few of the required fields will automatically be filled in. You'll see that the required fields are the ones that have the red star next to it. Any of the fields that are not shown as required, you obviously do not have to fill in, but of course we do encourage that you fill in as much information as possible. To make things easier for today's training, I'm going to go ahead and pull up an example of a listing that I already have created. I will do this by, of course, going back to the dashboard and clicking on Manage Listings. Any of the expired or active listings will appear at the top of my page, and any of my canceled listings will appear at the bottom of the page. To open up a file, you can go ahead and just go ahead, single click it, and it's going to open up. As you can see, I already have my required fields all filled in. Once you have those all filled in, you can go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and click on Next. You'll see that it's going to bring up your Contacts tab. For a listing, the only contact information you need is going to be the seller and then you would go ahead and click on Submit. Then it's going to bring you over to the Checklist tab. So this is where you are going to upload all of your required documents. When you create a listing, these boxes under Status will say Required depending on what documents are needed. Once you upload all of the required documents, they will, be a per, they will be reviewed by your broker. If a file says incomplete, that means that your broker has not accepted the document that was uploaded. If for some reason that does happen, they will go ahead and write a comment in this box letting you know the issue that needs to be corrected. If your broker has a, approved the document, it will show as completed. The Documents tab up here is an extra place where you can upload a document if there is not a place for it in the checklist. But of course, if there is a place in the checklist, you do want to go ahead and upload it there. To upload documents and assign them to your checklist, which I'm going to go back to, go ahead and click on Attach. <clears throat> Let's see, let's do this one. Um, so you'll click on Attach, and then if you already have the document in your Documents tab, you can just go ahead and click on Assign, and it will go straight to your checklist, and then it will be in Review. Or you can click on Attach, which I'll choose Addendums this time. And if it is not in the SkySlope file, as you can see, I don't have anything here anymore, just click on Upload a Document. You can choose any file from your computer. And then you'll go ahead and click on Start Upload. And as you can see, it went ahead and jumped over to my checklist here. And then your broker will go through and approve them. So it will say in review until your broker approves the file. Um, once your broker has reviewed it, it will either change to completed or incomplete. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and say that you scan multiple documents together, um, such as your referral agreement. Let's see what I have in here. So let's say that we did scan multiple things together. 
you can go ahead and click on split and that's going to go ahead and split up the document for you per page. Okay. So then you would just go ahead, um, you could click split and then you would go ahead and split up the document by each page and put them into your checklist just like I had before by attaching them. Okay. So that's how you would go ahead and attach a document. You can also cancel out a document. Let's say you did put it in the wrong place. You would just remove the document just like this. Okay. And then you could, if it was in the wrong place, go ahead and just throw it back into the correct place. Your log is where it's going to show you the time and date that your documents were uploaded, as well as any communication that goes on within the file. So this is just a really great way to keep everything together in the file. So you can go back and look on it if you need to. Um, a very easy way to keep track of emails in regards to each specific file is going to be this um, Skyslope email address. So you can go ahead and use this email address. Like I said, it's going to keep track of all your emails and log them in here. It will log all conversations. So for example, let's say I emailed my broker about needing to know what else I need to do to have my doc document approved. I can go ahead and CC this Skyslope email address in the email and it will log the conversation for me here in my log. You can also go ahead and send documents to your file by emailing them to this email address. So a new Skyslope email address will be automatically created for each one of your listings or transactions. It will only log the email if you CC the Skyslope email address. If you BCC it, it will not log. So if you are going to use this email address, which I highly recommend, just make sure that you are CCing, not BCCing. The tasks is a place for you to add new tasks to a specific file. So you can go ahead and use that. If you have an accepted offer on the listing and you need to convert the listing to a transaction, you would go back to your checklist and click on accepted contract. And that's going to go ahead and convert your listing to a transaction. This accepted contract button will only show up when all of the required documents have been uploaded. So now I'm going to show you how to create a transaction. So let me go back to my dashboard. And what you're going to do is click on Create Transaction. And much like a listing, you're going to input the address. And when you do this, a few of the required fields will automatically go ahead and fill in. For today's training, I'm going to open up a transaction that I have already created by going back to my dashboard and clicking on Manage Transactions. So um, let me go ahead and click on this one. Once again, you do only need to single click on it to open. As you can see, I have all my required fields filled in here. You do want to make sure that you are selecting the correct checklist type because this is going to determine what documents are required in the checklist for that specific sale. Once you have all of this filled in, you would just click on Next. That's going to bring you to the Contacts tab. As you can see, I do have all of my required information filled in for the seller. You'll also need to fill in the information for the buyer when it is a transaction. And you will need to fill out the title or escrow information. The, um, the title or escrow information is important to make sure that it is, um, it's important to make sure that it is accurate. This is where our processing department will issue your commission disbursement authorization. 
The checklist tab here, the documents tab, and the log tab are all going to work the same exact way as they do in a listing. 